AI-powered code editors are becoming a bigger and bigger player in the world of development, and Abacus.ai's Code LLM is no different. It provides an interface through which to talk to your code, and you can actually select from a multitude of different LLMs to do that. And it also has a built-in autocompleter feature, so you can just tell it what to code and it will code it for you. If you remember a few months ago, I made some videos on something called Chat LLM by the same people, and for half the price of Cursor, you get access to that and this all in one bundle. Code LLM is a pretty new player to the field and I've been using it uh, for a little while now. I've actually found it particularly helpful at work where I've been doing more JavaScript related things recently rather than Python and I'm nowhere near as confident with JavaScript as I am in Python. It's been really helpful to, to be able to talk to your code base using the LLMs to have additional context when asking it questions. And it's been really good for my productivity in these areas. I was asked by Abacus.ai to make this video, so thanks to them for sponsoring this, but know that I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't actually like it and didn't actually use it. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. If you wanna see videos only than anyone else, then become a member using the join button below. With all that out of the way, let's see what Code LLM has to offer. You can download Code LLM from two uh, locations. The first of which is on uh, codellm.abacus.ai and you can just hit this download button up here. Or if you are already subscribed to Chat LLM, then you can come to your Chat LLM portal and use the Code LLM link here to download it. Additionally, if you already have access to Chat LLM, then you already have access to Code LLM as well as the two are bundled together. Similarly, if you don't have access to Chat LLM yet, you can get uh, both of them, so Chat LLM and Code LLM, for just $10 a month, which is the same price that Chat LLM was originally and is half the price of Cursor and it's 50% less than Windsurf. So this is definitely positioning itself as a cheaper option. They also have an offer on at the moment where they're offering an unlimited quota on requests until the end of February. And even when that runs out, the quota defaults to what it is for Chat LLM, which is 2 million compute points, which works at approximately double what you would get with Cursor or Windsurf. It's also a fairly new player on the field, meaning that there are fixes and improvements coming all the time. So by the time you work with this, it might look a little bit different. It might feel a little bit different. So be sure to keep your eye out for those as well. If you're interested in learning about Chat LLM, I've already done some videos about it before, so you can go look at those, but you can generally uh, create images, generate PowerPoints, search the web, just chat normally with an LLM, uh, things like that. You have all these different choices as well, so you can choose between all these other choices. But I'm not gonna go into detail about that today as I already have uh, those videos that you can go and watch. Once you have Code LLM downloaded, you can open it up uh, and it will look very similar to VS Code because it is another VS Code fork, much like Cursor and much like Windsurf. These are not the default themes, these are my own themes. It's the non-Microsoft version of VS Code, which a lot of people will be very happy about. That means it doesn't have the setting sync, but if you already have an installation of VS Code, you can just copy and paste the settings and the key bindings over into the Code LLM directory uh, to get your old um, settings back, which is really nice. Extensions are also installed by default and are actually shared between the two. So if you swap between VS Code and Code LLM, if you install or remove any extensions, they will actually be synchronized between those two. So that is something to keep in mind. You'll notice on the side, we have this, what's called a secondary side panel, and it's taken up with our Code LLM chat, which is the main thing about this, I suppose. Um, and you can create a new chat by just hitting this plus button here. And then you can choose the LLM that you want to use. So you have a selection of Claude Sonnet 3.5, Abacus.ai, Dracarys, I think that's pronounced. I'm actually not sure. Uh, Quinn with 72 billion parameters. You have O1 and an O1 mini. But you also have this code LLM option here. And this is not an, a separate model in itself, but more a router. So it will look at the message and then depending on the complexity of the message, will send the... Uh, the message to the best model or the uh, the model it sees as a better fit. So more complicated messages might end up going to O1, uh, lesser complex ones might go to Sonnet. I imagine a lot of them do end up with Sonnet because Sonnet is just very good overall. But if you don't want it to do that, you can just select whatever model you want it to use and it will use it just fine. I'm going to leave it on code LLM. And we can use this to talk to our code as it were. So we can ask questions about how it works. We can get it to create new functionality and we can get it to modify existing functionality as well. 
So over on the left side, I have a few files open, one of which is the client.py in my analytics project. And you know, long time viewers of the channel will probably start to become very familiar with this project because I do use it in examples really rather a lot because it's my most worked on open source project. And so it just makes sense to use it. But we have this fetch report here, um, which to cut a very long story short, hooks into the YouTube analytics API, downloads some data, and then can convert it into a report for you. Um, and there's a, a pretty big doc string here, but let's say that we didn't really know how this worked. Um, so we could get the AI to explain it for us. So can you explain, oopsie does this, uh, how the client fetches reports. And you'll see the client.py is added to the context because it's the file that's currently open. It's able to read uh, the file and look at it. So it says it's it calls self to authorize, which is true then creates a temporary shard, which is also true. Uh, it then makes an actual API request with the provider parameters. And then it gives us some examples, which I believe are from here. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, it gives some examples from the readme here or, or the doc string to help with that. If you were unsure about how the shard worked, you could then ask it a follow up question, but it's context would only have the client.py for the time being. You can add more than one file uh, to the context using this little filter icon. When you press that, it will come up. We can filter it. I already have shard.py in here, uh, but you could filter uh, all your files if you want and then find the one you want, click it. And now it's included in the context and code LLM will be able to read both files. So we can do, can you explain how the shard system works? And now it will be able to use the shard.py to find the implementation. And it will also be able to use client.py if it feels necessary to explain its usage. I think it is actually doing so here. So we can see that shards are mini clients. This is taking it, I think, largely from the documentation because the documentation describes them as mini clients. There's this example here that it does. Um, it tells you what each shard instance have, the benefits of them, and an example usage. In this particular instance, Analytics is quite well documented, uh, but I've had a lot of success uh, using this to explain uh, code in my workplace, which is largely not documented at all. It's able to figure it out just fine. And even with projects that are quite well documented, sometimes they can be difficult to follow along, especially if they're large files, and this can be used to help summarize them. You can also use the code LLM editor to create code in the, in the actual code base itself. So we're going to get rid of the chat window for now because we don't need it for this next bit. And we're going to go on to interfaces.py. And this report object takes the report data and converts it to a number of things. So it can convert it to a JSON file, a CSV file, a spreadsheet, pandas, uh, polars, all sorts of things. One thing it can't do is convert to SQL. So we can say, uh, we can give it a comment. Uh, I've been doing JavaScript today. That's why I did a double slash. Uh, write a function that converts the report data to SQL uh, using SQLite3. Hit enter. And now uh, CodeLLM will go and do that using its autocomplete functionality. And then we get this uh, little suggestion if we hit tab. We can see it's given us a function. It's given us a doc string as well, which is nice. And it's it's just using the pandas implementation, which was expected because pandas does have, to have this two SQL um, functionality. But now it's written it for us and it's actually written in some try finally logic as well, which is really nice. If you wanted to iteratively improve on this code from here, you could bring back the chat and say, if we set the context up, we can actually use this open file. Uh, can you provide type annotations to the to SQL function? And this will now know what I'm talking about because it's given the interfaces as a context and it'll be able to see this function. And then we have some, uh, we have some document, I can't scroll up at the moment because it's still generating, uh, but we have uh, some type annotations in there like we requested. We can either then copy the code, insert the code, which I think we'll just insert it at the end. Uh, sometimes an apply, oh, there we go. It's come up now. I think it was still generating stuff. We can hit this apply button and this will apply a diff, uh, to the code. And I'm really far zoomed out and it's not happy with that. There we go. Just, <laughs> I've got to zoom out for this bit. Go all the way to the bottom. We can see what it wants to do. Um, 
and it's just changed this bit here. So we can see that it wants to add uh, type annotations to this code. So we can hit apply or accept and it will now apply. And we can also get rid of this comment as well because we don't need it anymore. You can also use this to perform more complex tasks. So if I move over to this queries.py file and we scroll down, this is a very complicated file just in itself, but we have this reports detection or report type detection mechanism, which works out if it's a playlist or video report. And then there's just a lot of if statements based on various things. Um, this was written a very long time ago and I've been way too scared to go and optimize this because there is an awful lot. This API is so complicated. Um, if this didn't, uh, if this didn't prove that, but we can use code LLM to simplify this. And when I did it before, um, it actually did a very good job. So hopefully it does it again. Um, so can you simplify, uh, the way that um, oh, actually, let's. Uh, uh, can you simplify the logic that goes into determining the report type? And you'll add queries to the context, as you can see. And now I might have to zoom out again for this because um, it's going to be a long one. Uh, so it's now simplifying it by using uh, dictionaries. Let me just wait until it's finished generating. There we go. Uh, so it simplified it into using dictionaries. So we now have this report type mapping class with a dimension map. And these will be um, report types that are based on dimensions. So you can see here, if add type is in self.dimensions, that our performance is guaranteed to be selected. So it's just using uh, this map to, to make it a, a more optimized um, and simplified operation. And then we have the logic here. I think this is actually slightly cleaner than the one it did before, actually. Well, it works out if it's a playlist, it works out the mapping, and then it uses this um, to just return the report class that is in here where appropriate. Same with filters. Yeah, this is actually a lot simpler than the one I even did last time. This is, <laughs> this is cool. Um, and you just have some other default cases down here. And this is a lot simpler than the one that we currently have at the moment. Um, it would certainly be worth as with any AI response, just double checking to make sure that it still works as anticipated. It looks like it should be okay. But the way that I see AI, it's not really designed to do your job for you. It's designed to help you. It's designed to be a pair programming mechanism. So you can use an AI to get some ideas, get a good start, and then iterate onto that, um, you know, fixing any problems that come up or, you know, implementing anything that you think is a good idea as well. For just $10 a month, which is a lot cheaper than the other options. And considering you get the chat LLM as well, which is the more generalized LLM system, I think it's actually a pretty good deal. Let me know in the comments if this has piqued your interest. I know a lot of people at work have been bouncing between AI editors. There's still this phase of people trying kind of everything out. Uh, so let me know what you think of this one as well. Again, if you want to see my videos on chat LLM, which is the more generalized version of this, then you can look at the videos. I might actually create a playlist um, with all three of these videos in. I'll stick that on the end cards. Thanks again to Abacus.ai for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.